So we have the last of our potatoes here and they are all sprouting. These are ones that we grew in the ground and we need to use them or they're gonna go to waste. My idea is to go through these and pick out the ones that are just not gonna cut it. And then we're going to peel them all and cook them and make gnocchi. Specifically gluten-free gnocchi because in case you can't have gluten. Also, this is our last bouquet of the season. It's supposed to freeze, a hard freeze for like four days next week. So these are really just like the last little things that we have growing in the garden. Lots of roses that smell very good. I gotta peel all these. Lord. Also, stick around because once we make these, um, I'm gonna show you what we're doing with the gnocchi for lunch today. So the potatoes are done being peeled. Casey wanted me to let y'all know that ideally your potatoes would be larger than this. If you've seen any of our other videos earlier this year, we talked about how our potato harvest was really not that great. They, the plants just did not thrive. We did get a bunch of baby potatoes, which is basically what we have here. Um, so we're happy that we did get something out of what we planted, but they are much smaller than we would have wanted. to get together our vacuum sealer and bags because we're going to be vacuum sealing whatever we don't use today. And I actually need a few more ingredients from outside, so let's go to the garden. I am on a search for, I need a carrot, maybe two. I have some, where is it at? Here we go like celery greens. So we grew these, they grow more like an herb, but they taste like celery and they taste really good, but we don't have actual celery. So in place of celery, we will be using some of this. We have leeks right here. I might take one of these. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh my gosh, what's really in there? Okay, hold on. <laughs> Oh, wow, nice. All right, we'll use this in place of an onion. We've had really bad luck with carrots, always. Some of these are ready. We actually have some growing, but let's see about these. I think these are gonna be really tiny, but I don't need very much, so let's see. Okay, nice. Oh, <laughs> there's a chicken out. Looking for garden treats. She always gets out. That's Ursula. Okay. Tiny, but that will do. chicken drumsticks defrosted. Uh, so I'm gonna get those in here and brown them up. And then we're basically just going to make like a chicken soup. So I'll put the chicken broth in there, maybe a little water and let those chickens cook, drumsticks cook. We'll just let that go while we work on the potatoes. 
you didn't know already, we had meat chickens. Uh, we had them for, I think, 11 weeks. And we butchered them on our own with one of our friends that lives around us. And it was kind of, um, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe I'll, we can do a whole video about that whole situation. But we do have a lot of chicken now. So we have been eating a lot more chicken than we ever did when you have to buy it at the store. And this is definitely one way to use cuts that you're not as interested in. Like Casey doesn't love wings or drumsticks. We have lots, I mean, we're going to use all of the chicken. So um, I'm going to pull these out and I'll let the bones go so that it can add to the broth. But when we pull these out, I'll shred the chicken off of these. And I'm only making enough for basically Casey and I. So this isn't going to be a big batch cooking thing. But it is using stuff that we grew, and that's really exciting for us. I don't think we've actually made a meal with only stuff we've grown. That's actually really hard. But this is going to come really close. So we're going to be using the chicken broth we made from bones of the chicken. Uh, we're going to be using chicken meat. We're going to be using those vegetables that we picked and uh, the potatoes. So we're only using like flour and salt and maybe some cream. Potatoes are done. I'm gonna put them in this potato ricer back into this pot so we can season them. As you can see, they're very hot. Ooh, Ooh. that was nice. I'm going into making the gnocchi so we're just taking like very small amounts of the dough at a time we're gonna try to roll it out it is gluten-free so it's a little different than just a regular gnocchi I have just a small batch of it gnocchi made. I used the back of the fork to kind of get the ridges. You don't even have to do that really, but it is nice because it captures all the flavors. Um, with gluten-free ones, it's just not as pasta-y as gluten-full gnocchi or like gluten-full pasta dough. There's no like stretch if you will. So I've got a lot of gnocchi to make but the soup is ready for the gnocchi to go in. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in there and we're going to let them boil until they float and then we'll put the chicken back in and I have a couple other things to put in there and the soup will be ready. And we're going to drop our gnocchis in. The sun is fading fast. We are losing light. So I'm going to do as many of these as I can. And I'm going to start packing them in these individual um, vacuum seal bags. 
And this will just be enough for one serving for Casey and, and I together. In a second, the soup is gonna be ready and I'm gonna stop doing this so I can eat food. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna add some frozen salt. Good. The broth, the broth that we made with our chickens is just hands down the best, the best broth, broth I ever had in my life. Ever, I mean it's so flavorful. So you make like a soup like this, and it's just really, really good. Well, we're gonna go eat this, and then I'm gonna complete this. And that's all. Our potatoes have not gone to waste today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys. Bye. Here we go. I'm about to put these in the freezer. We have 150, but I also froze a bag of like two servings. So I think we're gonna get probably seven bags total, but I'll show you when they're frozen. I'm gonna put these in the freezer. Mm -hmm.